This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. We will do that. Things I Found Online is brought to you by Manscaped. Why? Because it just is. You can shop for your loved one and buy them some grooming equipment for their down there. It just is. And we, you can get the Manscaped collection, which includes the Lawnmower 2.0 waterproof electric trimmer, crop <laughs> preserver, anti chafing ball deodorant, crop reviver, ball toner, and refresher. <sighs> Sound effects by Jamie. Magic mat, set of three disposable shaving mats. Wow. Free gifts. The shed, which is a travel storage bag that's a $39.99 value. And Manscaped boxers, anti chafing boxers. Oh, I've met them. The anti chafing boxers. So, I've seen them play. I've seen them fight. And I have some other news for you besides the manscaping uh, announce that we do at the top of the show because we are a podcast. So we do have a sponsor. There's okay. more. There's Respect. more. Wait, there's more. But I just got an email that, that told me this, and I thought this would be a cool thing for you guys to know. Did you know that Apple Podcasts are now available on Alexa? And usually Amazon and Apple do not play well together. And so wow. this is like, I don't know if Jimmy Carter brokered this or what happened. Hands across the water. But did you know that you can now uh, enable a podcast just by saying something like, hey, Alexa, play things I found online on Apple Podcasts. Alexa, play things I found online from yesterday on Apple Podcasts. Alexa, skip ahead 30 seconds. Alexa, play the previous episode. And then Alexa says, stop saying my name in front of yeah. everything you say to me. <laughs> All right, now we're officially starting the show. Okay. Alexa, record a very special episode of Things I Found Online. Featuring a talented performer who, according to recent DNA testing and 20-some-odd years of Christmas photographs, is my daughter, Haley Kiyoko. Haley Hi, is everybody. Yes, she is. Haley is joined on the panel today by two prize-winning Haley Kiyoko fans, Crystal and Emily. Uh, they call themselves Kiyokians, and I, for one, believe them. And I am Jamie Alcroft, tossing effortlessly to our host, Louise Palanker. Louise! So smooth, Jamie, and thank you, Haley and Kiyokians, for joining us today. Our show is called Things I Found Online, and so we begin by Googling Haley Kiyoko. You can find her online. Yeah. Here is Haley's website. <gasps> oh. Haley, tell us what we will find should we travel to your website. <laughs> you can find lots of goodies. I have my tour dates, my merch, uh, music. Looks really good, actually. It really does. Oh, on that, how many cities is that? 20 some odd? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to think about how many. I just go from one to the next. So <laughs> good I idea. think it's about six weeks. Yeah, um, exactly. Deal with what is in front of you. That's my attitude. That's um, right. Haley has much excitement to share with us. Her recently released new single, Runaway, is the latest track off her project, In Motion. I'm too sensitive for this shit. Hey, and this is when I get to label my um, podcast explicit. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Haley's, <laughs> most <vulnerable. laughs> it's Haley's most vulnerable and unapologetic body of work to date. This is Haley's first new release since her debut album, Expectations, which was widely celebrated by fans and critics as one of Hashtag 20 Gay Teens Best Albums. I'm Too Sensitive for This Shit also features the previously released tracks L-O-V-E, Me. Mm -hmm. Did I leave out a letter? I'm not good at spelling. Um, Demons <laughs> and I Wish. <laughs> and we can expect a full-length project coming in January. Is that right, Haley? Well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a project where I'm releasing like a series of singles. So I have um, another song and a video coming out in the beginning of the year, which I'm really excited about. Oh. That is a really exciting way to do things because in the olden days, you just had to like get everything together and like press it into like a CD or an album or a tape mm -hmm. and everybody got everything all at once. But now you can, you can kind of release things sort of as you complete them and everybody can get excited about what you're excited about together. Yeah, I, you know, I, I love releasing a full body of work, but also when you do that, a lot of the times you don't get the attention and the focus that you want for each individual song. And so I thought it would be cool to release a project where every song is highlighted and celebrated and explained and by releasing them separately. Can we circle back to the the, the uh, descriptive terms that I stumbled over? Uh, vulnerable and unapologetic, and, and could you explain what you mean? Uh, um, I mean, I just, when people ask to like describe who I am, like 
I'm definitely vulnerable and very emotional, very sensitive. And, (laughs) um, but my music, I feel like the best word to describe it is unapologetic because, um, I'm just very black and white with everything that I do when I'm happy. I'm happy when I'm sad, I'm sad. Um, and it's very extreme emotions. And so this project specifically, I'm too sensitive for this shit. Each track covers these extreme emotions and these feelings. And so it's not wish-washy. It's very like, this is how I feel, take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. And um, that's kind of why I end up with the word unapologetic. It sounds so, really healthy too, yeah. because a lot of people who would describe themselves as being vulnerable would always be saying, I'm sorry, and you're not. You're saying, oh, I'm done with that. I'm just going to be this way. And that's, you're going to have to accept that. I'm unapologetically vulnerable. (laughs) (laughs) And Haley, you're also headlining a new tour kicking off in January with stops at New York City's Terminal 5 and LA's Palladium. Mm -hmm. And can you talk about what we can expect when we come to see you? Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm planning the set list as we speak. Like yesterday, I was finalizing the list, um, working on transitions and dancers and the lighting rig and all that stuff. So lots of planning. Uh, But I haven't played in um, North America like as a headliner in a year and a half. So I'm really excited to go back out and connect with my fans and play the new music. Uh, it's going to be so exciting. And as my fans know, and Emily and Chris hopefully know, um, you know, my shows are not just a show, but a place to be yourself and to make friends and to find a community of people in your, where, you know, where you live to be able to bond and, and really feel free. It's a get together. Yeah, it sounds like, like a, a get together, just kind of a hang. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, it's, sounds how many dancers do you have this tour? <laughs> how many dancers do you have this tour? Um, I don't know. It depends. I think we're gonna probably have two dancers this time. But the last time I did the U my the U S tour, I didn't have any dancers. So that's right. I'm excited. So it means to... you'll be dancing more. Yes. Yay. Yeah. Dancers. Depending on, the, on my stretches, yes. I love it when you dance. You dan- You started as a dancer. Yeah. She is an excellent like dancer and dancer. a drummer. But now, on the subject of Haley Kyoko, far more powerful than any Google machine is her father, Jamie Elcroft. Mm-hmm. Jamie, can you give us a brief play-by-play on the art and science of raising this interesting and creative child? <sighs> well, we're all a force of nature, I believe. Each individual is. But some of us are just a little more powerful and forceful than others. And Haley was just always very focused, very focused on everything, whatever she did, basketball, softball, karate, um, everything she did. She was just very focused. And and and, and I, I think, excuse me if I use this example, Haley, you've heard this story obviously, because uh, you know me all your life. Uh, we were sitting in the car one day and I asked, I have three children, and I asked my eldest daughter, Elise, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, oh, I think I think I want to be an art teacher. I think that would be fun. And then I asked my son, Thatcher, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he says, I, th- I think I'd like to uh, design video games. And I said, what about you, Haley? She said, I'm going to be a star, Dad. <laughs> 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 it was the visualization unapologetic when she was like six or seven years old she'd visualize this and she oh there she is and that was about that was about round about the time she said that yeah that's the gang where did you yeah. get that photograph it's, it's a christmas card it i is. found it was, yeah it was a christmas card yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we all happened to wear black that day and jeans. And, and it's so sad about the furniture. They used to have some. We did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> now, uh, Haley, did sale. you know, Haley, we scanned the Faniverse to bring you these brilliant and beautiful individuals who have so all met excited. a very high bar to be here. There was an essay question. <laughs> yeah. We asked, what does Haley's music and message mean to you? And we have Crystal Danielle. And... Crystal, would you like to stand beside your desk and read aloud? <laughs> All right, you don't have to stand. You don't have to stand. All right. Yes. This, this is an is easy class. Yes. 
Um, but go ahead and read your paragraph because I was very mo- moved by it. Okay. I will say I do know what a paragraph is, five to six sentences. That is not what this is. I want to keep it short and sweet. But I wrote, uh, Haley's music means the world to me. I discovered her music when I was still in the closet and afraid to truly be myself. Now I listen and it means pride. I listen and I'm proud to just be myself. Oh, good for you. And that is beautiful. You and be. and you must know, Haley, that this is what your work is doing for individuals one at a time. And uh, mm. does that make your heart full? Yeah, I mean, well... Chris, have we met? Have we met before? Yes, or is this we our have. First time? We have met. Yeah. Where? What? What was the last time? The first time we which, met, uh, it was 2012 at the Roxy. Uh, second time wow, was yes. You were at the original place. Yes. Yeah, because I was like, I, because I, I know both of them. I've met Emily too. So. Mm-hmm. And then we reunited um, when you opened for Panic last year. That's oh, with so the Staples crazy. Center. Yeah. I love your rainbow eyeshadow. Thank Isn't it you. so Thank you. Good. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> I wasn't able to see you guys before, but now I see you guys. So it's it's so nice to see you, and thank you for doing this. It's awesome. Well, uh, Chris has some questions for you, and she's oh, yeah. prepared five questions. So we're gonna. This portion of the show belongs to Chris. Okay. Question number one: um, What's your creative process like when you direct your music videos? For example, do you instantly know what the video will be like after you write the song or do you play around with concepts? Uh, it depends on the the song, like Gravel to Tempo was instant. Like I wrote that song and I was like, I'm going to be in the hallway dancing in front of hot girls and like standing up to, <laughs> um, to them and loving myself. And like I really saw the exact video in my mind and then there are other videos where um, it's been a, a while since I've written the song. You know, sometimes they don't come out till years, a year and a half after. And then you're kind of like, okay, I know what this song meant to me when I wrote it, but how can I like reimagine what this song could mean to me? Um, and then I just, I kind of challenge that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's a, it makes my job exciting because then I get to go into directing a video and not, and kind of having this freedom of taking it somewhere else, even though it's, it's such a personal song um, and it's a personal story. I love that. love that. And I want to say, Marla, if you're ever looking for someone, <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> I know. That's amazing. It looks so good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, question number two was... Uh, Marla does, you... her, uh, does her makeup. I know. There's That's a team. Right, yeah. There's a whole There's team, a Haley. Team. I'm getting that. It is. Yeah, 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 I've met yeah. like seven or ten new people yeah, over the past 24 hours, and I love them all. They're all Scorpios. They're all oh, Scorpios. my God. So am I. Wait, me too. You Can are? I be on Team Haley? Me too. Yeah. Add me on yes, the list. Well, Louise, you changed your diaper once. I've changed her diaper. I've <laughs> I've rocked her to sleep. You've and then you guys moved. Right? Yeah, yeah and then we moved out yeah. to Westlake. Uh, well, who so, knows what we remember though? No, but you know, I mean, she I I told you that was the cutest baby I've ever seen in my life. I mean, yeah, I probably said that to you cute. every time I was in cute. her presence. She was very it was cute. nuts. <laughs> uh, it was otherworldly how cute that baby was. But uh, but look at her still. I mean, gorgeous. So uh, question number two, Chris. Uh, question number two. Do you plan on pursuing more acting roles in the future? Definitely. I. It's interesting. I, um, I used acting to kind of uh, allow myself to stay creative while I was working on music. And now that I'm working on music, you know, finding time to also act. Uh, is something is a challenge, but I will definitely, you know, I would love to do like a Marvel movie or like be a, you know, who doesn't want to be a superhero? So like, you know, if I can squeeze <laughs> in being a superhero every once in a while and, and do some fun stuff in between the music, that'd be great. But I think like, you know, you know, my focus has just been really trying to make my mark in the music industry and, it takes a long time. I mean, you came to see my show in 2012 and it's going to be 2020 next year. So it's, um, a long journey. And can can um, I interject a question really quick? Can you talk about the billboard awards? Because was that your first hosting? Because that's a whole other skill set, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I I hosted the billboard women in music, um, event, which was crazy because I've never hosted anything except for my high school talent show. (laughs) That counts. uh, 
I think it went well. Yeah, yeah you did oh, a good yeah. job. You yeah, did you're, you're, no, your high school talent show went really well. <laughs> it really was great. It was really great. Yeah. No, you yeah. were you were as you were better at the Billboard Awards than you had. Well, you had a moment of genius at your high school talent show, though. Yeah, you really I did. did. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm on the spot because I can't remember it. You got to <laughs> maybe bring in some footage. I'll bring in some footage. Oh yeah, we can yes. kick that old school. I was sure. uh, well, we got it's in a box somewhere. All right, I can transfer stuff. I'm I have skills. Okay. All right. Question number three, Chris. <laughs> uh, question number three: Are you still in contact with anyone you've ever written a song about, <gasps> and do they know that it was about them? <gasps> oh, juicy. <laughs> the tea. Juicy the tea. Question. We're not messing around here. Really. <laughs> There's one of them named uh, Dad. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I, I mean, I've written a lot of songs about a lot of people. A lot of them have been people that were almost in my life, but never was because no. it was not a successful relationship or it never was a relationship. And I was just dreaming of one. So <laughs> I there. would say yeah. most likely they're probably not in my life. Mm. <laughs> Highly relatable. They haven't gotten in touch. Or fortunately, depending on the yes. situation. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because uh, you wrote, uh, was it feelings? Did you write that for somebody? Was it, what, no, what was yeah. the video that you did that was just a single shot oh yeah feelings that the was feelings video. yeah um oh yeah feelings i wrote at a time when i had just entered the single life and it was like people just expect you to not have any emotions or be affected by anything that they say or do and you're just supposed to like be okay and i was like no. <laughs> I was like, I have feelings. I over communicate. I like, these are like all the things. Relatable, and, like, relatable. I don't understand how I'm supposed to, you know, not feel. And so that, yeah. that's what inspired me for that song. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I remember you told me that I, I thought it was fascinating. You said that you did it because uh, you've seen men flirt with women when they oh, walk the down the street. Video. Yeah. I was talking about what the song was oh, about. Oh, you're talking about the song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, I thought that was really interesting that you you reenacted that flirting in the street thing in the video. And yeah, I, I think I was telling you, you know, like you see Michael Jackson and all all, all of these, you know, pop stars, you know, getting to flirt with women mm -hmm. and being unapologetically, you know, flirting. Yeah. A guy trying to go after a girl and you know, you don't get to see girls going after girls like that. And so um, that was my inspiration for that music video. Yeah, I think that's great that you show that side of, of life. I think that's wonderful. You go, you go at it from that direction. Next question, Chris. The next question is, what was the hardest song and what was the easiest song to write on expectations? Um, oh. Hardest song... Uh, there, I mean, there... There were a couple, but He'll Never Love You was a difficult song to put together in its entirety. We reproduced it like four or five times and um, just getting it right and getting it sonically like perfect. That was a difficult song. And then um, the easiest song on the album. Uh, the instrumental? <laughs> I would say let it be let it be yeah. let it be was just um a song that just came together I wrote the melody with my producer and we did the lyrics um with uh Chloe Angelitas and we just knocked it out in you know half a day a couple hours and it just like it just flowed you know sometimes like anything, like sometimes a day is an e day is easy and sometimes a day is hard. Like that song, it just it just worked for us. I think that's that's the closest thing you have to an anthem. That song, yeah, I love that song. Yeah, it's fun oh, to play yeah. live. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Does everybody sing along? Yeah, everyone screams. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what everyone looks like. Okay, last question, Chris. Last question. Uh, what is required on your show writer? Like, are you a all green gummy bear type of person or what do you like to have? 
Um, I feel like that's a very thoughtful question. <laughs> um, and it's really making me, you know, dig deeper into my myself and who I am as a person. <laughs> I, uh, I normally, I'm, I'm not, I don't have like a thing for green things or anything. I, um, I like apples. I like, normally you're on the road, right? And so mm. you're normally in like a, a, a place you've never been. So normally like bread, PB and J mm. situation. I like, um, dark chocolate, 70%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I go, it's yeah. Above, it's above seventy percent. It's too healthy. Yeah, you know do you throw grade. it? Do you throw it across the room if it's anything? Yeah, I, I just throw it very angrily, okay. and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, how dare they!" Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Devane shrimp. All right, we're gonna break for commercial, and when we come back, we're gonna have Emily's questions. Great! Yay! Take a deep breath in. Now count to ten. There. Don't you feel better already? No. Why not? Oh, that's because that's anger management crap. Join me and learn real ways to overcome your anger. I share my own struggles and journey to break free of destructive anger. I will give you ideas and insight that will bring you to a place of healthy anger. Yes, there is such a thing. Learn how on that anger management crap with Matthew Plotner. All right, we are back with Emily. And Emily, would you like to read the class, your essay? Yes. Okay. So I discovered Haley Kiyoko back in 2015 with the song Girls Like Girls. It's been crazy to see how much she's grown musically and personally throughout the years. It's amazing to see Haley, a lesbian woman of color, killing it in the music industry. She's a great representation that other queer people of color can also be successful in the entertainment world. And her music is an escape for me from this world. Oh, nice. Nice. That was lovely. Lovely. And uh, go ahead with your questions. Okay. my first... Try to stump her. <laughs> well, not, the first question won't be, but okay. In the Battle of Hastings. I started out easy. <laughs> was William the Conqueror? Well, Emily, Emily, you, the, you the, the, the answer in the lyric, form of a question. The lyric, the lyric show? Yes. What, what was, was the, the first theater. show we met at? The Lyric Theater. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was like so long ago. And I was so excited because I think the capacity was like 200 or something and we sold out. Yeah. And uh, I think that was the first time we met. So yes. okay, I'll keep going. Okay. So my first wow. question is, what is your inspiration behind Runaway? Uh, yes. Yeah, so Runaway is my new single. Do you guys like it? I do you like Love it. Love it. Good. I um it's one of my favorite songs. I I I was just so inspired by the fact that like when we get into relationships, all of a sudden all of these like personal issues start rising and then you're like expecting your your partner to fix all of your issues and then you realize, "Oh my gosh, it's me." And um you can't putting- run away from yourself, is it? Well, the idea is just kind of, well, in the song, I'm kind of daring this person to um, make me stay, like daring them to love me enough mm. to, to make me stay. And like Ooh. every time things get hard, I run away and mm. I, I, I cause the issues because I tend to act like a child and um, kind of like overreact. And a lot of the times it's my own issues as opposed to... Um, theirs and so it's um i don't know it's it's a complicated song but i feel like it it evokes the emotion of just feeling kind of chaotic with your trying to navigate those feelings in a relationship yeah like but in, in, in other words owning or just knowing or believing that you deserve something good and not always trying yeah. to push it away and challenge it yeah owning it yeah, and you're yeah. daring someone that you're with to be like hey like say something to me that's not going to make me run the opposite way and say, mm-hmm. see you later mm-hmm. and start all over again, you know? Yeah. That's hmm. excellent. Well. Next question. Okay. My second question is, how was the process of making new music for your upcoming album different and or same as your release songs? For example, like theme of water, specific instrument message. So this project is different. Um, 
because I kind of just went into the studio. I went to Joshua Tree and I just started to write and I didn't really know um, what I had to say, but I knew I had to say something. And when I got out of the studio and the project was in my hands, I was like, okay, this is emotionally chaotic. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I'm all over the place and I need to get my shit together. (laughs) So (laughs) um, that was basically how the kind of the theme came together, which is like, I'm too sensitive for the shit and like trying to navigate your emotions, you know, like one day I'm depressed and dealing with demons. And the next day I'm blaming someone else for my own issues. And then the next day I'm happy and in love. And it's just like, you know, every day is a new day. And so I wanted to kind of capture life and itself in this project and kind of the ups and downs with it. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. Okay, go ahead. Okay. How do you deal with a creative burnout if you get them? Um, yeah, I get them. Uh, I think like resting and like for me being in nature, going out of town, being in the desert, finding time to just like focus on something else besides like as a artist, it tends to be very egocentric. You're always focused on yourself. Like, what am I going to say? What is it? What am I going to do next? And so a lot of the times for me, like if I'm burnt out, like hanging out with my niece, my sister just had a kid and like hanging out with her and focusing on them and my love for them and and really kind of getting myself out of my own bubble really kind of opens my eyes to other possibilities because when you're a creator, you have endless possibilities. You can always create and you never just have one good idea. You can create thousands of good ideas, right? So, um, you know, not limiting yourself and knowing that you're not limited. Are you finding that whatever sort of complicated mix of emotions that you're that you're feeling, if you express them in a song that, that people relate. And is that like an interesting experience to be able to put your, you know, your, your, all of your mix of emotions out to the world and the world says, says, Oh my God, I feel the same way. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what the core of representation is, is like, Hey, this is who I am. This is how I feel. Does anyone else feel this way? And being brave enough to, to speak out about it and find the people that do feel the way you feel, you know? And that's the only way to normalize these feelings. We all, life is, I was driving today. I was like, why is life so hard? I was just like, I'm like, was looking around and everyone's walking on the street and I saw like someone laughing, but everyone's just kind of in their own world. And like, we're all just trying to find happiness and passion and acceptance and love we're all searching for the same basic core values and it's like why do we make it so difficult for ourselves well we, so, it's complicated yeah life it's is complicated, complicated. That's, like that's when I, you can't, I know it is complicated but it's like how do we make it less complicated how do we simplify it to find the joy in life mm-hmm. and how do we you know embrace that joy and use it as opposed to seeing it there, but then not taking it and, um, holding on to it. So for me and my music, I try to do that. I try to read in between the lines and write the songs that are in between the lines. And so we can kind of find each other. And I'm grateful for Emily and Chris who have been avid fans from day one. And, you know, I think that's what, what connects us is that we're all we're all searching for something and we're we need each other to get through everyday life. Yeah, right. we're all in this together. Yeah. And ha- high five. Yeah. High five. <laughs> and how have you found that the Internet helps us connect and feel more a part of a community? Do you think it's it, is the Internet more more um, collaborative or more divisive? How, how do you find it in your life? I think it takes you four steps forward and two steps back every time, you know, you go (laughs) forward, you go back, you go forward, you go back. Um, It's a tricky thing. I I'm grateful for the internet because I do think that, you know, like I was saying, you, you go to school, you live in a bubble, you only know the people that you interact with in person. And so when you're growing up and you're battling being accepted and struggling with your sexuality, 
um, you don't know who else is struggling. And so you're extremely isolated. You feel extremely alone and there's no support. And, you know, it's difficult, especially, I mean, you can have accepting parents, but, you know, parents want you to be happy and they don't want you to struggle. And it's difficult to have conversations when you're, when you're trying to navigate who you are, when you don't even know who you are yet. And so I think that the internet is helpful in a lot of ways because you're able to find people that are maybe four steps ahead of you and have learned to love themselves and are able to like help you navigate that difficult time that maybe you don't have that person in your, in your, your town. Mm -hmm. In your life. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The thing with parents about anything really is like, there's too much on the line for them to just be like, oh, yeah. oh well, I think you should blah, blah. <laughs> like, they, like you're looking into their eyes and you're just like, oh my God, I cannot say this because it's just, there's too much at stake for them because I'm their child. So you need a friend who's like more, like a little bit more removed from your emotions that could listen and not be like, oh no, can I bake you something? You know? Um. <laughs> yeah. That's what I always no, used to it do. doesn't mean yeah. that they don't care. Oh, like it, it doesn't no, mean that No, your parents care too care. much is like, yeah. That, yeah, no, of course your friends care, but it's like they're completely responsible for y your happiness as a human. Like, I think, I don't know, I've never had a child, so I can't really identify with that feeling, but well, yeah. It, when, when Haley first told us, my, it was so long ago that my initial reaction was, oh, this is going to make her life more difficult. But in fact, it's made her life easier because she's happy. And she's fulfilling her dreams. And that, you know, that was, that was my main thought. And with society changing, we're going through a societal evolution right now. And with society changing, it's easier now. It's much easier now because there are more people in the community through the Internet. By being online, you're connecting anonymously very often with people who anonymously feel like you. And you go, wow. There's other people out there. Yeah. And it's now it's not easy. And still, I think, of I think that's no, good it's not point. easy. Of course. Yeah. Like, but it's easier. I think it's easier and yes. it's becoming more um, accepted just by trying to normalize um, the community, but it's still so hard. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, even when you're not battling with, you know, figuring out your sexuality, just like battling with loving yourself and your, your body image or anything like it's just, it's difficult to navigate self-love. You talk about general. when you were a teenager? In general. I mean, in you general, even now, 40 year olds, anyone that is, that still don't love themselves or are still, you know, discovering who they are or, mm -hmm. you know, speak negatively towards themselves. Like everyone I think is going through it, but I think adolescence it's it's especially, you know, as you know, when you're young, it's like it's life or death. Like if someone doesn't like you back, it's like the world's ending. And it's <laughs> it's never gonna be the same. I also think that if you're a white heterosexual person, most of the imagery that you see is white heterosexual people, whether you're looking at a billboard or commercial or TV show. And so when you don't see yourself represented, I mean, we we take it for granted because I, I saw my, like I could I could put myself in the category of tomboy because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a lesbian, except for that. I like guys. Everything else about me is completely <laughs> lesbian. But I, but I could just I could check off the box tomboy. Yeah. But if you if you like girls, you're you, you don't see that represented. And and then Haley comes along and like you're part of this wave that hits the shore and not you're, you're not going to sing about you're not going to be a lesbian woman and sing about a guy like Elton John was still singing about a girl. It's like, mm -hmm. what what are you doing? Uh, like, <laughs> like you, you, you don't love Judy and, and Barry Manilow. Well, anyway, the point I'm making <laughs> is like from the start of your solo career, you were like, I'm going to sing about girls because I I'm attracted to girls. And so that's helping these guys because that wave hits the shore and, and people are just like, oh, my God, it, it just feels so good to see myself represented. And it just it's so yeah. powerful and meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I think that, um, you know, every artist has their own journey and they have their own choice of how they want to, you know, what they want to sing about. And I think for me growing up, I connected to a lot of music and I was like, 
gosh, this is exactly how I feel. If only it was about a girl wow. and I like a girl was like, <laughs> there was always like one step further that I felt like I could be even more connected to, to the song personally. And so, um, that's what I'm doing. And a lot is- of those people singing those songs, Haley, were singing it to a girl. They just weren't <laughs> able to say that out loud. You know, like, whether it was they didn't Dusty choose to. Springfield or Dusty Springfield. <laughs> whoever, yeah. right. I mean, you know, look, people are people and it's like being being attracted to the same sex is normal. It's always existed. And mm-hmm. and finally, we're, you know, we're able to say all of that out loud. And yeah. Yeah, but I think society doesn't make you feel normal and school doesn't make you feel normal and okay. a lot of people still don't make you feel normal. And so it's normal to you and it's not, but it's still not normal for most of America and the world. And so I think that's why, you know, having these conversations and loving yourself and being brave and not letting that negativity, you know, cripple you from your dreams is like really, really important because that's what's going to move the needle forward um, eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it, once we can, we see same sex couples holding hands on the street, it, it, because it's not normal until we see that. Because people are afraid that someone in a passing car would throw something, or it's until you see people in every city mm-hmm. holding hands, mm-hmm. it's it. There's still work to be done. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Let's get to your next question. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. I feel like wow. Wow. <laughs> So that was the answer to that one. I don't know. It's just my job to move the show forward, Jamie. I don't have all the answers. Such a such a. Rapid, I'm not lesbian, Jesus. Such a rapid oh. clip. Okay, my next question is: Who is your favorite female artist at the moment? Mm, good question. I have a lot of. I feel like the pop game is strong right now. Mm. I feel like there's some really mm-hmm. amazing female artists just in the music industry that are being themselves and like have done it their own way. Um, you know, like you've seen Billy and Lizzo and Doja Cat and Megan the, St- the Stallion and all these these just powerhouse women that are just being themselves and, and creating a new lane for themselves. And so I'm, I'm loving seeing these artists that have been really putting in the work and um, getting the recognition that they deserve. And mm-hmm. um, it's been a really inspiring year to see um, so many great artists. So it's hard to pick one, um, but the pop, the pop game is strong right now, for sure. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it really is. It's impressive. Last question. Okay. Do you have any advice for other queer women of color trying to break into the creative industry? Mm, just to literally love yourself and be yourself and effing go for it. I don't know if I can cuss on the show. But <laughs> <laughs> literally, like, you know, I... um. You just have to continue to create and make good stuff. Like, it's like, you just have to keep putting out good work and people Mm -hmm. will find it and people will be inspired by it. And it's really hard to, um, you know, it's hard. You're you're, uh, the little negative, you know, person in your brain starts talking and it's like, no one cares and this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. And it's so hard to just like, put that person in the passenger seat, but just put that person in the passenger passenger seat. You're the driver. You're the creator. Um, There is no one out there like you because you have your own personal journey and your own story and you should create. And that's what you should do and go out there and continue to do it. Um, But it is hard work. You have to work really, really, really hard to um, establish yourself and to let people know that you're worthy. And I think that that's what's so frustrating sometimes is that we have to prove our worth and we have to prove opportunity when we should just have an opportunity to be ourselves and to chase our dreams and to be paid equally. And um, so it's difficult, but you just have to have thick skin and you have to support other artists that you love and you have to band together and just do it. <laughs> Just do it. That's, That's good. a good slogan. That's good advice. Something um, I have that. a question for uh, Haley. When I read through your bio, I uh, 
I become exhausted. And um, <laughs> also, it feels like you you would need strong business and project management instincts to navigate and perform at your level. How do you make big decisions with branding and product associations that will affect your creativity and your messaging? Thanks. I actually went to school for business, and mm. I never I never got a, my degree, but. I, 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 when I was young, I've always just wanted to be a businesswoman. And so everything that I approach, I have a, I don't know, a business tick in me. Um, for me, I don't want to do anything unless it's going to help somebody. Mm. It's got to move. It's got to move the needle forward. I've, I've been trying to be a musician since I was 16. And every year I'd be like, <laughs> okay, this is what I'm going to do to get the, to the next step. And then this is what, and so for me, there's never been time wasted. It's always been about moving forward and moving forward and how to connect to more people. And, um, it's hard. I don't really know what I'm doing. I, I just try to, follow my gut instincts as best as I can and what feels good to me. I've also learned that, um, I don't know, being resourceful is a very powerful talent and skill to have. Mm -hmm. When you don't have what you need, how are you going to do it? That's the question, right? And for me, that would be the title of my book. If you don't have what you need, how do you do this? You Hashtag know? workaround. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's like I, you know, I, like I said to my dad, I want to be a star. Who the heck knows how to do that? I don't know how to do that. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to take dance class. Okay, well, I'm going to do this. Okay, like, you know, we're all figuring it out on our own. And it's tough because everyone has their own journey to what they consider success to be. And I, my, my perspective on success has vastly changed in the past couple of years. But for me, it's been about just continuing to help people. And like, if I keep doing that, I find that to be successful. What advice do you have for parents who have creative kids like you? Because you, you had two creative parents who nurtured your, your creativity. Mm -hmm. And so do you, do you come away from that childhood with advice for parents with kids like you? I was really fortunate that um, my parents were able to let me do extracurricular activities. Um, there were points where, oh, you could only you can do one extracurricular activity this year. Which one do you want to do? And so each year I would pick something. So like one year was karate, one year was dance, mm -hmm. one year was drums. And I was really fortunate to be able to explore what I like to do. I would say if you have a creative child, let them create. And even if they don't have extracurriculars that they can go to, create in the home, have a treasure chest. And let, like my parents had this big chest of just random stuff and we'd open it up and we'd put Costumes. on shows in the living room. Costumes and yeah. no coffee table. Uh, that's that's it's a stage table. no coffee table because the living room was the it's studio a stage. Yeah, it's a stage. A stage. <laughs> and 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 um what about your your postums what about those do you still the use those do you still put those up yeah the post-its yeah my I, not post you know, that's a cereal no yeah. post is a drink really, oh it's a drink <laughs> go ahead I was lucky. My, my sister you know she graduated she was a couple years old she's four years older than me and she would leave, she left me post-its of reminding me that, you know, I had big post-its that said, you are enough, you are beautiful. Like all of these things that I didn't believe. And mm -hmm. I had to read to myself every day. And I think that the more positive affirmation that you can give to your child and let them know that they, that they are worthy, the better and the more creative and the further they can go. So I think, I think having that positive affirmation, even if you don't have it from someone else, giving it to yourself is like, it's it's hard, but it's really important to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you write your own post-it and you have a really bad memory, you will come home and think someone else left that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she thought her sister left it for her, but she really wrote them all. <laughs> yeah, that was the all right, truth so we're going to do what's Twitter trending, and today it's questions for Haley. And so Haley retweeted... Uh, <laughs> that she was going to be on the show and taking questions. So we're going to read some of the questions that came in. This one comes in from Chelsea F thoughts and she tweeted, 
Where does she get her confidence from? How does she stay confident? Oh, it's post-its. We, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. Post-its. <laughs> and how do you feel good about yourself uh, and love yourself? I, 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 I do try to speak in a positive way. Like I, like if I, if I'm looking in the mirror and I don't think I look gorgeous and I say, you look gorgeous. It just, even if I don't believe it by saying it, it helps build my confidence (laughs) because then maybe in a couple of days I'll actually believe it. Um, Mm -hmm. That's a tool that I use that I can offer. I have a good one too. Never say the word that you don't want to be like, don't say this is like a double negative but don't say um don't be stupid say be smart say the word that you want to be that you want to be yeah yeah Yeah. not be negative and don't let your password be anything negative because things you you guys know this right oprah says so because things that you type (laughs) oprah says oprah said yeah it was on our book club if you type a password like like guys like maybe 15 year old guys will have like passwords that are just really hostile and and gory (laughs) Mm-hmm. don't do that like let's be loving so type things because you're kind of like physically ingraining a message that's not good right. if your password is something ungood blueberry right. blueberries, blueberries instead good. of dracula <laughs> teeth <laughs> something right. like that dear now, dear Maisie tweets my big question is how do you get over someone who breaks your heart how do you how do you let them go? <laughs> you and write- I, before you answer this, I want to ask you, Haley, if you get a lot of these like love, dear Haley questions. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I, I had told a journalist the other day because she kept asking me all these like dating questions. I was like, just because I'm gay doesn't mean <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, like, oh, I, oh, I need that on a t-shirt. That's your new motto. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, just because I am doesn't mean like I have all this experience, but sure, yeah. I'll pretend that I do. <laughs> um, in my experience, which I've had lots of broken hearts, um, writing in my journal and having a conversation. I think a lot of the times, like when I would get my heart broken, they would make me feel crazy or like that I made something up and it would like invalidate my feelings. And so I think the best way is to validate your feelings and whatever that is, whether writing out, writing the truth of the situation and, and, and kind of like stepping into that truth head on is the best way to kind of move on. And sometimes it is rejection. Sometimes it's, they don't like you and like that sucks. And um, it's about realizing that why would you want to be with someone that doesn't like you? Yeah. You need chemistry. You need chemistry in any relationship. (laughs) Well, any relationship. I think it clicks, it clicks and clicks and clicks and clicks. And then finally it clicks in both directions. So it's like your whole life is like, you like someone who likes someone who likes someone who likes someone. And then all of a sudden with enough revolutions around the sun, like it clicks in the same direction. And then you, you can stop trying so hard. You're like, Oh, it's supposed to be easy. Okay. (laughs) That was easy. Yeah. And when, and then it, it's completely different than, Oh, like, Oh, they just got a text. Uh, who's that text from? Like, uh, you're so nervous whenever you're forcing something to that yeah. isn't natural. And you don't want to be in a difficult relationship anyway. But you Why, do when you're in love. Be... Like you have to. Really? Yeah. You forgive? You, you When you're quirks? in love, you just want it to work and you'll do anything to make it work. And then when you're finally with the right person, you're like, oh, I don't have to worry about who's texting them because yeah. I know they're in love with me. Yeah. 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 I, th- I think that the difficulty is that you have to have when you're looking for someone, you have to have the longevity to not give up and be like, A, I'm going to listen and learn from my mistakes, Mm -hmm. listen Mm -hmm. to what I need and B, not give up and know my self-worth. And those are like the two hand in hand things that keep you going to eventually, you know, like you said, finding that person that it, where it just clicks. Yeah. Yeah. So when somebody breaks your heart, you just write a song. You can write a song and you can write poetry. Yeah, you can go for two like songs. really long walks in the rain, and and yeah. you you can just be sad for a couple of weeks, and don't check them online. Don't don't see what they're doing. Un you know that un- stuff is hard. Yeah, really? yeah, it's really hard. Don't sit out in front of their house and do, and like <laughs> really? for, no, no get out of the bush, Dad. So really? <laughs> so listen, you you for a while you're going to be tempted to like know 
what you did wrong or what you said wrong and you're going to relive every conversation but it's not that is a a rabbit hole that ha- that has no positive into it other than you falling and hitting finally the bottom of it it's it's natural to be thinking like oh if i had said this or wait when i was here and they were there were they really there ugh that's exhausting and so I did that my whole life <laughs> right we all do and then you just have to be like, well, this wasn't meant to be, or I wouldn't be going through all these machinations. Mm-hmm. And you just have to keep reminding yourself. I don't know yourself. what that word means. But what did you just say? What does it mean? What's the definition of machinations? It's just like. It's complicated it's like systems of. You just keep retracing. Process. It's like rewinding a tape and playing it back and playing it back oh. and playing it back and trying to make it make sense. The only thing that makes sense you is like, like what definition? currently is right now, which is that <laughs> this is not the right person for you. And mm-hmm. you reliving conversations isn't going to make them be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a tweet from I A F H underscore M R. It's a pretty name, which is not rolling off my tongue, but that's their Twitter name, and there's their profile. Um, and this person wrote, "What's the best piece of advice someone has ever given you? Make it be from your dad, because he's sitting right here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the oysters. Uh, I'm, <laughs> the oysters. I've, I've collected a, lo- a lot of pieces of advice on post-its. Um, <laughs> trying to think, I don't know. I think um, I always go back to um, just focusing one day at a time. I think for me, I'm always looking at the big picture, and I get overwhelmed, and then it like it freezes me and like I'm frozen and I can't move forward. And so, uh, like focusing at one, one, taking one step at a time is such a basic phrase, but it's really true. That's and like, it's a basic especially phrase. if I'm like in a dark place or if I'm just like not having really a great week, like literally just like being like, my job is to get through the day and to mm-hmm. start another one tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And like, that is my job and that is my duty. And I deserve that, you know? And I think that that helps me when I'm, you know, really needing that extra, extra help and that, that, um, drive. Are you, are you creative when you're in that mindset? No, 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 not at all. Okay. I'm normally creative when I'm out of the darkness. Like Uh when I've, when I've seen the light, when you have a vision, that's where I was. Yeah. Cool. I'm right uh, about that. So you get some perspective when once you pull yeah, out. Yeah, I of need it. perspective. Yeah. Otherwise, I, you know, I can't reflect on what was happening. But like what I'm hearing, when I'm hearing from you, Haley, is that like all of these different uh, waves of emotion, those are what you know how like peristalsis makes food digest because you're you're. Is that a mm-hmm. Greek god? Yeah. <laughs> Peristalsis. <laughs> Come here, bring your spear. I need to digest. It's like in your intestines are going like this and they're making something productive happen, which mm-hmm. is keeping you alive. But this is why you create because you're, you're, you're kind of have these mood swings that are energy. They're like, they, mm-hmm. they, they create mm. tension and then release and tension and release. And ah, that's, interesting. you get all these um, inspirational spurts of energy. I don't know. So I think maybe embracing it and knowing that this dark mood will pass yeah. like day and night. We're all kind of always revolving. I have, well, I should write fortune cookies or something. Yeah, like uh, so Jenna tweets, <laughs> uh, Jenna tweets, being both Japanese American and gay has been a very difficult journey for me. Your music itself got me through a lot in the beginning of college. I was wondering though, if being Asian made it more difficult for you to come out. So is she talking about cultural thing or? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think I had a, I don't think no. being Asian made things more difficult for me to come out as far as my sexuality is concerned. I think I, that was, there was two different things going on in my, in my adolescence. It was like, I wasn't white enough. I wasn't Asian, Asian enough. And then I was gay. And so there was, there was the sexuality side. And then there was also my culture and what I looked like. And so that those were two different things. And, um, it was difficult. I think, I think for me growing up, I didn't want to be Asian because Asian wasn't cool and they were, you know, 
Asian girls got made fun of for being, you know, the normal stereotype Asian girls. And so it was difficult because I'm like, I'm not that box. I'm not that stereotype you're making, putting me in, like, stop putting me in a box. And then same with sexuality. It's like, okay, well, this is what a lesbian looks like. And the, you know, they're like this. And I'm like, I'm not like that though. Like I like girls, but I'm not like that. And so it's difficult because no matter what you look like or who you love, everyone's always trying to put you in a box. And, you know, Weezy, you were lucky you identified with the tomboy box. I was very lucky. A lot of us don't identify with the box. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, well, if I don't fit in a box, then where do I go? And you didn't fit in. You didn't fit in the tomboy box. You don't think? Um, I want. I no. I don't really. You were very girly. Yeah, I I think she's more. She's more feminine than me. You dressed up a lot. No, I want. What I want to know from all of you is, did you guys go to Tumblr and find your box? Was was the internet helpful in finding a box? I don't Hmm. know. Ask Emily or Chris. Yeah, Chris. I don't fit into a box. Just, you don't no, you wanted to talk right. about coming out, didn't you, Chris? Yeah, yeah me, yeah. me coming out. Um, it was, it was interesting because like I came out online, I came out on Facebook. Um, like my friends knew I was uh, bisexual uh, at the beginning of high school, like because they met my girlfriend. Um, but my family didn't know. Uh, no one else really knew. Mm. And just last year, I don't know, like listening to Haley's music, and then I went and saw the movie Love Simon. Something oh, just like that. struck a chord in me. And I was like, you know, I was like, well, like, what are you scared of? And so I just wanted to post it and like get off the internet, go hide. And I didn't want to see what people had to say in case it was negative because sometimes it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I posted on Facebook, got offline. And mm-hmm. I had a lot of people telling me like, oh, well, why didn't you tell me personally? Why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, it's my thing. Like, you it's can't. You, you. Yeah, you can't yeah. tell me. Were they like, literally kind of offended? That yeah, you- I oh had family members like hurt. Like, why didn't you tell me personally? I'm like, for me that was the best way for me to do it. I mm-hmm. had to just mm-hmm. post it so everyone could hear at once and then I was done with it. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was, but everyone was supportive. That shows supportive. compassion on their part because yeah. they wanted to know. It, it does, but still yeah. they should have embraced the way she chose to do it. Yeah, they should have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they wanted to but, know, but yeah, I was, I just wasn't ready, but. Yeah. It's so hard. It is. Yeah. Like, even with. Must be. Like, seeing everything on the internet and people who are out and about, like, it's still hard. Like, you're not mm-hmm. ready until you're ready. Like and that was the moment that I was ready and that's how I wanted to do it. So I does any it. does anyone watch This Is Us? I don't. I, I sometimes. Well, there, there, did, but well, I heard it's a great show. So there's a little girl on the show who's maybe in middle school and she was starting a new school and she was going to be like, I'm just going to be out. And then they, everybody was talking about the boys they liked or whatever. And do you think he's cute? And she just agreed. And then she was so mad at herself because she missed that opportunity to come out. And then there was like a a social media game where they were they were saying post your crush. And she mm-hmm. says to her father, I really, or she says to someone in her family, I just really want to post a girl so that I cannot have to, in other words, hide. Yeah, hide anymore. Mm-hmm. And she finally posted a picture of the a, a celebrity girl that she liked. And all of her friends were like, cool, cool. And, and she just fe- felt so relieved. And I, I thought that's, someone's talking to their kids. These writers are talking to their kids because that's a really modern experience mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. in middle school, a kid could still sort of struggle like Simon, even though his parents would be accepting and everybody would be accepting, but it's still, it's like every, I think parents should say to their kids like at five, like, do you like boys or girls? So that it's always, it's not the kid that has to come out ever. It's like, we always accept that you might like boys and you might like girls or you might like everyone or mm-hmm. it, it shouldn't have to be this such a heavy lift for, for, for young people who are already struggling with so much. I, I agree. Yeah. I feel like that's a really good point because I, I think we we struggle to communicate and like having that open dialogue and having your if, you know, having your parents just being like, hey, I love you no matter what, no matter who you are, blah, blah, blah. And just like setting the tone. A lot of us don't have that. And most people don't do that because everyone just assumes it's like know? a default position is, oh, I have hmm. a straight kid. Well, you may not. I don't yeah. remember saying blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what? No, no, no. I don't remember saying blah, blah, blah. I'll put it in the next script. <laughs> okay, thank you. But no, but it was a different time period. When when Haley grew up, as, as things are changing, I think, at, at warp speed. We're moving forward and we're learning from each other. And I, I never, it, it, within the past five years, I've learned so much about 
transgender and mm-hmm. I just we're just learning so much and I think the key is just to stay open and when people say this is this is I'm fluid I'm along this spectrum just be like oh okay cool instead of like wait a minute pick a team you know the stuff that we yeah, used to right. say 10 years ago yeah. place for the other team yeah yeah like don't be so like bisexual people are so greedy you can't like have a crush <laughs> on everyone well yes you can why you know why not all right so we have one more we're, we're evolving though we're we just, are we're so, we're socially evolving and we've got to accept the fact that we're evolving we do expect a lot of ourselves and that's good but i think we have to just get in the frame of mind that th- things are constantly changing they always have been mm-hmm. these people who are coming out now have always been there and they've always been transgender and they've they're always so it's just an evolution and sexuality is a very personal thing Mm -hmm. so we we're getting pretty personal with each other and we haven't classically as a species gotten that personal i don't think it's a personal thing but it's also the thing that makes the world go round. most songs are written about love most movies have Mm -hmm. a love story in them Mm -hmm. like love is everywhere and so if you're a kid growing up and you don't see representation it's that's really difficult and confusing and it means oh your parents have checked this default box that means they think you're straight and now it's your job yeah, tell them well you're hopefully something. we're past that we have a gay mayor running for president yay mayor yay. pete all right so we have one more tweet from mathlete tweets and mathlete tweets um do you need a chiropractor after carrying the entire gay community on your back <laughs> <laughs> I do need a chiropractor. <laughs> yeah. I'll take some recommendations. Oh, it's all, it, so how it's do you, all it's cracked up to me. How do you feel about the title Lesbian Jesus? I mean, it makes me feel important to people. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel really, worshipped? Um, it's cool. Um, you know, I, I, I've i always, people are, some people are offended by that term and or nickname or, I, I didn't make it up. My fans made it up, but the best way for me to describe it is just kind of like, um, you know, my fans, my Kiyokians, everyone, they've, they, we create a safe place for each other mm-hmm. and we're able to lift each other up and give each other hope. And I think that there should be nothing wrong with helping each other through life and finding hope and um, igniting it. And so I'm very grateful to have found you know, people that are just like me all over the world. And that's not something I had growing up. Do you feel like you get as much back from your fans as you give them? I mean, I, I, I hope I give them as much as they give to me Mm -hmm. because I, I feel um, an endless amount of love and support and freedom to be myself. And so I hope that I give them that freedom back. How did that photo op start at the end of your concerts? Whose idea was that? Because no, no matter where you go, no matter how cold it is or how hot oh, it is, or where, there's well, a photo op at the end of your concerts. Photo. And there's like hundreds of people, or at least 60 people standing there, if not hundreds. There's 12. They, they know that I have to leave the venue at some point, And so a lot of my fans will wait outside the venue so we can like meet and hug and stuff. So uh, yeah, overseas, it got a little... Got a little out of hand. A lot of people would just be <laughs> waiting in the streets, and um, but I always come out and say hi. And then I, I don't, I can't take a photo with every single person, so we just do like a big group photo. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's fun after every concert. Yeah. And it's a nice way of me staying in touch with you when you're on the road. <laughs> Yeah, I just send yeah. you a, a group photo. Yeah, on the that's nice. <laughs> You're like, I think I can pick her out. Yeah, she's in there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna uh, let's see where we can find Chris online. She's on Twitter. Uh, go ahead and tell people where they can find you online, Chris. Yes, my Twitter and Instagram are underscore exo chris underscore. Awesome. There I am. Hey, Kyoko flag in the back. What do you oh, nice. What do you love to do, Chris? Look at you. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. What do you love to do? Um, yeah. I love to just communicate. I love to talk. I'm in school right now. I'm a communications major. So I know goals, what you're and saying. goals and dreams. Uh, one day I want to have a podcast and mm-hmm. um, I want to start off in PR and then kind of like branch my way off into. Yeah, there you go. You might see you me will. on my own podcast yeah. one day. Yes. Good for you. Absolutely. Well, I hope you have us on as guests. I will. I hope you're paying. And we have Emily, <laughs> Emily on Instagram and Twitter. And, yeah, and you have a website. And tell us about your goals and dreams. My goals is to work in television in production. And I'm also a photographer right now. 
great. Yeah, she's great. Oh, those are great. Hire me. Yeah. I looked at some of your oh, pictures. Wow. I was like, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> awesome. How did you get that selfie of yourself without your arm being st sticking out there? I have like huh? photographer friends. Oh, they do. someone else <laughs> took yeah. that. Someone yeah. else took that. Yeah. I get it. I get it now. Okay. The original selfie was actually taken by a person who did not have any friends. <laughs> so it's okay if someone else takes your picture. It just means you know, I know people. Uh, now when you walk up to people and they're like, you want me to take a picture of all of you? They're like, no. Because they, you know that they want, they want a they selfie. They want a selfie. Like, yeah. No. Get out of our selfie. I, I, I look better like. I do look better from above. Yeah. It's like, I, that's why I'm going to buy a drone, Haley. <laughs> I am going to buy a drone. You have a drone following you everywhere yeah. you go. I this computer like eight inches higher. <laughs> See, you know, this is good lighting. And we all, these are the tricks you learn. Yeah. Podcasters. And I, I, I wish Chris and Emily the best. And I, like I said before, I'd love to have you guys at my meet and greet at my LA show at the Palladium in March. So wow, um, I'll you. make sure thank to do you. that. And I'll give you guys hugs again. And thank you for taking the time to educate people and um, sharing your personal stories. I know it's difficult and uh, being so open with me and everyone here. So thank you as well. Thank you. you thank you. Thank yeah. you, Haley. I'll see you at Christmas. I want to thank our, uh, I want to thank our guest Haley Kyoko. Jamie Alcroft is here. Chris Danielle, Emily Lau, uh, Thomas Hubble, Lane McFadden. Our producer is Dina Friedman. Our, our sound mixer is John Maddox. Our webmaster is Bill Filipiak. We're going to take a little break over the holidays, so you guys enjoy. I'm Louise Palenker, and we will see you next year. Bye bye. Good, you guys. That was awesome, Haley. My LA oh. show. Bye. What you say? You too. Wait, wait, wait. Can you stay on the screen for a second? Just stay on yeah, the screen yeah, for a second. Yeah. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna pose. Did. We're gonna yeah. pose right. Ah. Oh yeah, yeah. Get in front of me, and we'll take a group oh, photo. Oh my god, the water. <laughs> water. Tell me when you're taking it, so I can smile. All right, we're we're ready, Haley. Okay, smiling. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Thank you so much, Haley. Bye. 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 Bye.